Hey, today I am updating a DSC radio since it has just gone through the AT&T sunset here in February 2022. Uh, so we're updating a radio. Uh, I'm updating a lot of radios. Um, actually, a little background. I started uh, in security and fire in Ohio when I moved here in 2006. My job was to update all the 2G radios. So I've been doing this for what, uh, many years now. Um, so I've also gone through a lot of the growing pains that come with installing radios when there is crappy cell service. So I've, I've put up with a lot of junk over the years um, before the networks were really extensive. Uh, so today I'm gonna show you a couple of things, give you a couple of pointers if you're updating radios. Um, the existing panel here we're using is a notifier, I think it's an NFS2640. Uh, I'm wiring my radio, my Starlink, we're putting Starlinks, uh, Verizon Starlinks, I'm putting that on the aux power. I'm also powering two CO detectors. When you choose your auxiliary power supply or wherever you're getting power from for your radio, uh, you wanna make sure that, uh, for example, this one, you want to make sure you don't have too much current draw. Um, with radios um, like this, this this is the Starlink dual path. I believe this is the LTEVI is the part number. Uh, this one's pretty good. We used to use this on Siemens panels. If you use the regular Soul Path radio on a Siemens panel, depending on which one it was, like the 50-point uh, Cerberus, it didn't like it. It would it it drew too much current and it would shut the aux power off and you could never get the thing to boot up and you'd have a trouble on your panel for your power supply. Uh, so we ended up at my old company we had to switch to the dual paths just for that reason so that we always had the same radio we didn't have to worry about current. But that's a consideration you know if you've got uh, CO detectors or smoke bases or whatever you're powering there you got to make sure you're not drawing too much from where you're getting your 24 volts. Uh, so let me show you the old system. And this is, I've said this in another video, I'm, I'm going to be connecting a bunch of Alertus uh, beacons to their voice systems in different uh, buildings on this for this customer. These are their old ones. Uh, we're, we got a different configuration now. Um, I did a video on that, I think. Um, but uh, so that's, that's part of the system. When there's an emergency, the security team can hit a button on their app, on their phone. It'll trigger this, this will trigger the voice system, and this will send out its own message through the voice panel. Um, nothing fancy there. So this is the old DSC. Um, I didn't, I don't know what kind of a cell service this got, but you can see they had a high powered or high gain antenna running all the way through here and the installer stuck it out the window sort of dangled it uh out that white pipe it says fire alarm on it if you can see i don't know but uh that's ground level right there um one of the biggest things you want to consider when you're mounting these is get it above ground level absolutely um i had this sitting here the green LED is the signal strength on a Starlink. So below ground level, we have one bar. Um, the minimum for Starlink, especially, I think this has to do with Soul Path applications. You have to have two bars for Starlink. And it used to be for, uh, for Telguards, you had to have, I think, two and a half or three. Telguard would say the minimum to work would be two and a half. But I think Soul Path uh, wanted three. It, it kind of depends per manufacturer. But you can see now, I've raised this up. I'm almost at ground level, and now I have two bars. So whatever you do, don't be lazy when you install a radio because it's going to come back and bite the service tech in the butt when he has to come back and move your stuff because you just wanted to slap it at the panel. Uh, that's my biggest pet peeve is, you know, I've been in service many years. Um, if you're going to do it, 
do a job. Don't just rush it. Do it. Do it good. Consider the guy who has to come after you, and uh, it, you know it'll things will work out a lot better. Um, the way we do these, as far as wiring, is obviously 24 volts coming in on the left. Um, I did one the other day. We were going to use input two, three, and four for trouble alarm and supervisory. Uh, input two didn't want to work for alarm which or for trouble i don't know what was going on so i moved it over to input five down here uh, that worked fine um, you can also uh, i believe i haven't done one of these networks i used to have another guy who did the network side of these but i think this is for your net uh no there's your ethernet sorry there i think you can plug your panel directly in to line one and line two uh since we were not using lines on this uh, notifier panel we're just going to be using uh, the notifiers, trouble relays, trouble alarm, and supervisory relays at the bottom of the, the six, 2640 panel. So our end of the line resistors are all going down here. That is basically it. Um, I, uh, I'll do more videos in the future. Um, and I hope you'll like and subscribe and hit the bell to get uh, notif notified, notificated. And, um, and also, before I go, this is the uh, network card. I believe, well, you know what, I'm, not, I'm still learning about network cards here, but I'm not sure if this is one of the, yeah, this is the older one because it's got the NUP connectors instead of the USB connectors. Uh, sorry, I don't have enough light there, but um, I'm told by other guys, you don't want to power these down with the NUP connectors because they might not come back up. This uh, is, a, is a private school campus. Uh, they've got maybe 10 or so buildings on the network and um, I've had some co close calls with another panel that, that we powered down. So uh, uh, if that doesn't work, they can't update their existing fiber network. It's an older style and uh, they would have be forced into going to um, sell backup. Now I'm an idiot here. I'm wondering, I'm thinking this isn't connected because we're on cellular. So at one point this may have been connected, but it looks like it's not connected through the NUPS. So this might have been a 640 once upon a time and it was connected to the 640 and they just updated it when they put the new board in. Alrighty, I've talked enough. Have a good day. Be safe.